In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate earnings per share. So if we remember from other videos, we've got net income at the end of a quarter, at the end of a year. And we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to spread this net income among a pool of shareholders, right? So we've got all these different shareholders. And we're going to spread this, this net income. We're not actually going to pay it out, so it's just more theoretical practice what we're doing here. But we're trying to get an idea of how this net income would be divided up among, among the shareholders. What's their share? What's their claim on that net income? So let's go ahead and, and let's get to the formula for how we would go ahead and calculate this. So we've got net income, and then we subtract out preferred dividends, right? Because what we want to get here is we want to get an idea of the amount of net income among the common shareholders. So net income, we subtract out this, this prefer, any preferred dividends that are paid or so, and then we gonna, we're going to scale everything by the number of common shares outstanding. So it might be a little bit easier to understand it if, if we have an example. Uh, so let's say that we have XYZ Corporation and XYZ Corporation has, let's say they have net income of $30,000. And then they have preferred dividends, preferred div of $4,000. And then shares outstanding. Now we're talking about common shares. So common shares, and, and again, we take the weighted average of the common shares throughout the year. Common shares outstanding. Uh, we'll just assume uh, common shares outstanding. We've got fifty thousand. So now we, do, we need to make some calculations here, and we're just going to plug in to our formula up here these numbers. So let's get started. So we've got in the numerator we're going to have thirty thousand. This net income. And then we're going to subtract out the preferred dividends because the, the common shareholders don't have any claim on that. That goes to preferred preferred uh, shareholders. So now we're going to divide this whole thing by the number of common shares outstanding, not total shares, common shares. So we've got 30,000 minus 4,000 divided by 50,000. And what's that going to give us? That is going to give us 52 cents a share. So one way of thinking about how the earnings is earnings of thirty thousand dollars. So one way of thinking about how what what share of the pie each shareholder has. We can think of it for every share you own. You you really have a fifty two cent share in those earnings. So now we can think about a, a couple things that are a little more complex in terms of this this these preferred dividends that we're talking about here. What if the preferred dividends are declared but not paid? So. The company has declared that they're going to have a preferred dividend, but they haven't yet paid it. Do we go ahead and then deduct it in terms of, of calculating our earnings per share, even if they haven't been paid? The answer is yes. We go ahead and we deduct. Even if they haven't been paid yet, if they've been declared, you deduct them. Now, what if, what if the preferred dividends are cumulative, which I, I'm going to explain this in another. If you don't know what this is, go to my other video about preferred dividends. But what if they're cumulative, but they haven't been declared? Do we then deduct them from here? Because again, we've got this here. What do we do with the preferred dividends? Well, even if they're, they're, they haven't actually been declared, but they're cumulative, we go ahead and we deduct them in our calculation of earnings per share as well. So whether or not the, the dividends have actually been paid, if they've been declared, or whether or not they haven't been declared, but they're cumulative, we're going to go ahead and we're going to deduct those preferred dividends from net income, scale everything by the number of common shares outstanding, the weighted average throughout the year, and that will yield our earnings per share, which in this case was $0.52 cents a share.